Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Illustrator CS5 tutorial. This has been a long time in the making. The reason I'm doing this is because Vera asked me to review some of the wedding invitations that she had had done for her and show her step by step how they were created. I'm going to start off really, really simple here with this first one and do this one, which is a little bit more complicated, and then this one, which is a lot more complicated. I'm going to show you how to find fonts. I'm going to show you how to draw things. I'm going to show you a bunch of different shortcuts and a whole bunch of other things. Okay, well, if I'm drawing this, this is a basic light bulb, and it has sort of like a brush edge to it. So what I'm going to use here, I'm going to click on the pen tool, click here, and then I could either draw a circle or just use the pen tool. And then notice how this line is straight up and down. I want that sort of look, and then I come in here and sort of judge where it looks like the angle is ending. And click in here, and then I'm going to curve this, and then this is all the pen tool. And I'm holding down the shift key in some situations if I want to make that line straight. Okay. And I'm going to look for roughly the middle of this guy. All right. So I got this guy right here. Now what I'm going to do to make sure everything's symmetrical is to come up here and go object, transform, reflect. And you can see it's reflecting the opposite of what I showed right there. And I'm going to hit copy and I'm going to drag this guy over here just like that, so that the top edges are meeting. And it doesn't really matter about the bottom edge. I'm just gonna come in here and draw like that. And I'm gonna select both of them. And then I'm gonna come over to my Pathfinder tool, which you can see down here. And I'm going to click on this one. It's gonna unite them. Now this is all one image, okay? Now if I wanna copy the color, just click like that. If I wanna give it a brushed edge, first I'm gonna come over here, select my stroke, and change it to the same color. Then I'm gonna to come to brushes, which is right over here. And I'm gonna look for a brush that sort of matches up nice. If you don't know how to get the brushes, just click on window and then look for brushes. If it's checked, that means it's on the screen right now. Well, you can also come in here and go brushes like this and open brush library. And I already did that and I clicked on artistic and chalk charcoal pencil. And I'm gonna click on this one right here. And now you can see right here that it has sort of a brushed edge to it, similar to the light bulb that you see right here. Now to come in here and do this bottom part of the light bulb, I'm gonna come over here and click on this rounded rectangle tool that's right there. And I'm gonna roughly just come in here in that area right there, it already has a stroke, so I'm going to copy this. Basic color right here. If I click on the stroke and then click here, it's going to give me the same color for my stroke. And then I'm going to come over and give it a rough edge as well. So there's that rough edge. All I did was apply that rough charcoal brush to the stroke, just like before. So now I can come over here, drag this into place, just like that. And I can copy this. If I hold down Shift-Alt, I can drag and make a copy of this guy right like that. And make another copy. And make another copy. And that is how quickly you can draw roughly exactly what I was sent. And then, of course, if I wanted to come in here and create the background for this, just come in here, select this guy, same exact size. Come out of here, come over to the eyedrop tool, copy that color, then come in here and go object, arrange, send backward. Or you also have your shortcut. You can do this on a PC or whatever you have. So let's drag this into position. I'm holding down the shift key so everything is all aligned. And there you are, there's your light bulb and the background. Now I'm gonna drag this out of place and look at this font. I'm gonna show you in a minute how to perfectly identify any font. But just from looking at this, I'm guessing this is kind of Palatina. I'm gonna have Palatina there. So if, just to make this part real short, because I'm gonna have to dwell on one of the other ones. Good idea. Okay, so there I changed the font. Got this inside of here. I can come over to the character slide out tool here and increase the distance between all of those letters. And you can see right here, but let's do it a little bit more dramatic. So there is roughly, and also I could drag like this. I want to come in here and copy that part. Now for this guy is a little bit more complicated and also a little blurry, which I don't like, but either way. Pen tool, I'm going to come in here again, click. I'm holding down shift so everything aligns right. Well, this is not perfect. You can see here. And I'm just, when I'm making this curve, I'm just clicking and holding and letting the curve go into place like that. And this is all just a matter of estimating exactly what you're doing. So I'm clicking and holding, and if I want lines to be straight up and down, I hold down shift. 
but you're going to notice that this is almost going to be identical. And I always cut off by clicking that so that it doesn't overwhelm and decide what the stroke's going to look like. I prefer to define what the stroke's going to look like. Other people don't. And again, this is art, so everything is all, you know, whatever you like. That's the good thing about art. And you can see there, and now I'm going to hold down Shift to make sure that these all align perfectly. And I can go along and redraw the whole entire thing, just like that, with the stroke tool. I mean, it's simple. No big deal. All right, so and then I would continue onwards to this guy right here. And I'm going to click on selection tool forward slash and that'll get rid of that color. And if I want to come back in here with the pen tool, just click where I left off and just like that. And I also could have went and drawn half of this. I'm going to hit control Z, get completely out of this whole entire guy. Again, we have the pen tool selected. So I'm going to come in here and click on it and it's giving me a guide showing me where that meets up. Come in here, object, transform, reflect, just like I did before, and hit copy. And then I could just make a yellow box after I join these guys. So click on that, and I have the background locked. So now I got this chess piece right here. If I come in here and draw this yellow box right like that, eyedropper tool, come in here. Yeah, it's just basically line this up. All right, so I got that selected, object, arrange, bring to front, okay. And now select them both and say minus front. And you can see it cut out the chess piece for me. And it's perfectly symmetrical on the left and on the right. And then this font right here, just from basically looking at it, I don't think I'm right, but it is extremely similar to Futura. If you increase the size on it, and then you could obviously stretch the font like this. And it is probably not Futura, but it's definitely, if you want to do this extremely fast, it would be a knockoff. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to find out what a font is with this more complicated guy I got right here. Okay, so I got this basic JPEG. I'm going to jump over into Photoshop and do the same thing with GIMP though. And first, let's say we want to figure out what the font is. So what I did was I went in here and I copied this line of text and saved it as a JPEG. And for the tool on the web that I'm going to use, you're going to have to go into image size and increase the height to 100 pixels. Okay, so I did that for both of the fonts that exist, both the, the script as well as the non-script. Well, then I'm going to jump over onto the web. And if you just type whatthefont.com or if you go to newfonts.com, click on browse and locate the image that you just made inside of Photoshop. And this is an awesome website. So let's say I want to find this font right here. I click on continue and then you come in here and you define exactly what the different letters are because sometimes it doesn't quite get it. And if it's picking on something that isn't a letter, just ignore it. And here we have J and that's just a dot. So ignore it. Joyful and it is getting everything else. So let's click on continue. And you can see here, if we look at it, that Minya Nouvelle is the font. And you can do this for the other ones that I didn't go over. And if you click on that, you can click on Add to Cart, Continue to My Cart. And you all have to provide a user ID and password, but a lot of these fonts are free. Click on Proceed to Checkout, Place My Order, and click on Zip File and Download it. Minya Nouvelle. Okay, great. Now I got that font, and it's free. For Mac, if I open up my font book, got this guy right here. Drop it in there. Boom. Close that. And now you can see font Minion Nouvelle Regular is available right here. So if I wanted to make this whole entire thing, Minion Nouvelle font, you can see there's also examples of what the font will look like. Minion Nouvelle Regular. And you can see it, it is identical. And I could also do the same thing with the script in that I want to upload that. But that is actually a font you have to pay for. So you can choose to either pay for it or not for $45, okay? So if you don't want to do that, you can go to a website such as 101freefonts.com and pick a script out there maybe that you'd like instead. Or you can go to defont.com right here and look at calligraphy fonts, for example. There's thousands of free fonts. I don't really see any reason to buy them whenever there's so many free ones, but there you go. So that is how you get all of your different fonts. Now, if you want to actually take this image right here and break this down into individual pieces, that's easy as well. So I have this saved as JPEG and jump over to Photoshop again, jump into this guy right here. And I'm going to select with my magic wand tool, the tree part, because I've decided that's the main thing that I want to be able to get at right here. And I'm going to make sure I get it all. I'm going to come into select and select similar. Okay, so now I know I got every part of the tree, but I'm also getting this text here and I do not want to get that. So I'm going to hold down my option alt key, come in here and deselect the text 
that I definitely do not want to grab. And I want to come in here and say select inverse. So now I've got everything but the tray. And I know I also cut out the birds. So I'm going to select again, inverse, and I'm gonna come image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. And I'm gonna take my brightness way, way down, take my contrast way up, click okay. And I'm gonna go copy. I'm gonna jump back over into Illustrator and paste. We've got this guy right here, this graphic. And it's a little bit rough, but we can clean that up. And then we're gonna go into object, live trace. I'm going to come down to tracing options. I love to use this tool. I don't know why a lot of people ignore it. And I'm going to leave this black and white. And I'm going to come in here and click on ignore white, like you can see right here. And I'm going to click trace. What it's going to do is it's going to get rid of everything except for the part that I'm looking for here specifically. And I'm going to go object, live paint, make. And there you go. Now everything you got here is all broken down into individual shapes. Come over here and you can see that it copied all of the different colors. You probably can't see because it's so light, but if I draw a square inside of here, just like that, get the brown, file, arrange, send it back, you can see that it copied everything right there. And it's a little bit rough, but by tweaking these different things and also not having a very low resolution JPEG, that will help you out. Then you basically, the only thing left is the birds. So let's zoom in here, go object, selection, lock, then you would come in here and redraw your birds just like this. And again, remember if you want to be able to see, just backslash that. And as long as you have fill selected, it'll get rid of all the color that you're drawing in there. And this is all eye-hand coordination. That's all it is. The more you draw with Illustrator, the faster you get. So, And then, of course, you could come in here and draw the heart, which I trust you know how to do. Just draw it with a pen tool. Or you could live trace it out, but drawing it with a pen tool is easier. And then you drag the little birdie over here into place. And then you could also come in here with the text tool. I'm just going to make it the same color as that, just like this. Joyful hearts, da 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 da. So, Vera, I hope that helps you understand how to better use Illustrator. If there's anything I did here that was not 100% understandable, please leave a question. And obviously, anybody else watching this video, I want to help you as well. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If there's any other things you want to see me do with Illustrator, I've been using it for about 15 years, so I can do just about anything. Till next time.